there's an organic reaction between two of the ones that we've talked about already, the hydrocarbon derivatives, called um, carboxylic acids and alcohols, that when you put those two together in the presence of a catalyst, and the catalyst is, um, it, you know, generally in these reactions, when we prepare them in the lab, sulfuric acid, and quite concentrated too, by the way, 50% to 100% concentration of H2SO4 as a catalyst to make this reaction go faster, uh, and we warm it up too in a, in a water bath. Usually around 70 degrees Celsius is enough so you don't vaporize these chemicals and make the whole room stink. Stink. But what happens is you get a chemical when you take a carboxylic acid, see, COOH, carboxylic acid, with an alcohol, OH. When you combine the two together, you get a chemical called an ester. And so many wonderful smells on this planet are due to esters being present in food products. So all of our fruit flavors, those are esters. And so when we can make them artificially, manufacture those things, that saves us from actually having to grind up the strawberries and putting it in the Kool-Aid. Hey, <laughs> we just make esters and make the Kool-Aid smell like strawberries. And of course then we put the red food coloring in and oh, now it tastes like strawberries. A little bit of sugar too, right? So this reaction right here, what actually happens to form something called an ester, and how do you name those? Well, this one right here, because it's two carbons long and it's an oic acid, you know that that's called ethanoic acid. So, yep, yeah, that's right, you take some vinegar, ethanoic acid, and you react it with, that's methanol, because that's methane, it's one carbon long, with the OH group, that drop the E and add OL, Ethanoic acid, acid and methanol, when they react together, here's what happens. Even though this, you know that this right here is um, a weak acid and loses its proton in solution, what happens in an esterification is you lose this OH entirely here and what comes off of this alcohol is a hydrogen here. When those two come off, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, H OH, you're going to get water formed. And so, I'm just going to put the water down here. You're going to get H2O. And that, and what happens then is that you've got now a bond that actually is free here for this carbon and for this oxygen to come together, and that's what happens. And so, the C double bond O, O is from here attached to that right there. And so now, when you see a C double bond O, o in the middle of a molecule, that is characteristic of an ester that's present. Now, an ester, okay, is again that kind of flavorful smelling compound. And like I said, that's going to be formed by water being released. And that's called dehydration synthesis. Because dehydration, the water is sucked out, synthesis, we take two chemicals and we bond them together. Uh, it's also called a condensation reaction because water comes out, right? So condensation reaction, dehydration synthesis, that's how that bond is formed. Now, how do you name that molecule? Well, then you go to this. You take the old alcohol part, and if you look at all of it, take that O and take that O, and then everything attached to this C here, those two O's, that belongs to this end over here, and you look at that and you go, oh, that's not like a branch. So that's like a one carbon branch. So the old alcohol part becomes a branch. And so you call that methyl. But now actually you, you separate, and by, you know what? And organic molecules, and I haven't done this at all, but they are names where you can actually capitalize at the beginning. And so sh certainly, if you put it in lowercase, I don't think really too many people care. But they should be uppercase, molecule, uh, uppercase uh, characters here. Which is interesting because all ionic compounds, when you say iron 3 chloride or something like that, those are all lowercase. Unless they begin a sentence, you put all ionic compounds and molecular compounds in the form of lowercase naming for nomenclature. But, but actually organic ones, it's proper to put a uppercase. It really is. Now this is a methyl what? Well, what do you do here? This is the old alcohol part, the ethanoic acid. You drop the ic acid part and you keep the ethano. And so, and then you leave a space, and it is not one word. So it is methyl ethan. It used to be ethanoic acid, and now it's just ethanoate. 
So it's methyl ethanoate. Now that actually has a particular odor to it, that one right there. I believe, I'm pretty sure, that that's actually rum flavored. Now here's the thing, my students always say, Oh, Mr. Letterer, I just made, I just made some rum flavored, can I drink it? And I'd say, yeah, and die. And they say, oh, why? Because it's just supposed to taste like alcohol, isn't it? It's not supposed to be that. And I say, what was the catalyst here that you put in? Ten drops of concentrated sulfuric acid? Burn the tongue right out of your head. So don't be drinking the esterification results of your lab, because it's just too dangerous.